Consolidation subsequent to acquisition date. Topic three, testing goodwill and other assets for impairment. Under IAS 36, an asset is impaired when its carrying amount is greater than its recoverable amount, where recoverable amount is the greater of the fair value less cost of disposal and the value in use, discounted cash flows from the use of the assets. If there is impairment, an asset is written down to the recoverable amount. Impairment is assessed at the level of a cash generating unit, a CGU, and not necessarily at the individual asset level. Okay, so what does this all mean? It means that at the end of the day, if you have something on your books for more than it's worth, we gotta write it down, okay? Uh, you cannot be misleading to the users of the financial statements by having something exceeding its value on the financial statements. Calculation for impairment of property, plant, and equipment. So when do we need to think about or calculate impairment for PP&E? Well, annually, the entity must monitor and assess whether indicators exist. PP&E and intangible assets with definite useful useful lives must be assessed for impairment when indicators of impairment exist. And if those, if there are indicators, the entity then recalc me, calculates and records the impairment loss. Some indicators of impairment internally at a company, perhaps there is physical damage, change to use pattern of an asset or using it more than normal or using it less. Why? Uh, acid is performing worse than expected. Why? And externally, perhaps there is a decrease in the market value, or perhaps there's changes in technological, economic, or legal environment. COVID could be having uh, some <laughs> indicators of impairment that a company needs to assess. Okay, well, what about impairment of indefinite life intangibles? This includes, but is not limited to, goodwill. Well, first test must occur before the end of the reporting period in which the asset was acquired. These assets are not amortized because amortization would begin when an asset is determined to have a finite useful life remaining, whereas we're looking at infinite uh, useful, infinite in, or indefinite life intangibles. So therefore, need to test these annually, and if they are impaired, then write them down, just as we would with a, um, with a finite life asset. All right, short but sweet, let's take a look at this. Question, an asset can be sold now for $1,000 or in five years for $200. The asset can be used for five or more years and will generate $150 per year. The appropriate discount rate is 8%. Given this information, what is the recoverable amount of the asset under IFRS? Is it A, 1,000, B, 735, C, 265, or D, 1,735? All right, calculation time. We are told that the recoverable amount is the greater of either the fair value or the value in use. Fair value, if it can be sold now for $1,000, that's its fair value. And value in use, well, let's do, it's the um, generate $150 per year. Uh, oh, or in five years for 200. So this other um, value in use, uh, we can either get $1,000 for it today, or we can get $200 for it in five years, but between now and the five years, it's $150 per year. Okay, timing differences. This to me looks like a little mini cash flow, and I want to calculate its, uh, its present value because I need to compare apples to apples. So, present value, and I will come in here. Let's make sure I can see both. Oh, look at this. Okay, 
rate, 8%. So market rate, 8%. We're going to be looking at five years. Our payment amount, we can get $150 every five years. And at the end, get $200. And it's at the end, so I don't need to adjust my type. Oh, I always love this. It's zero point. Perfect. So let me revisit the question. I can either sell it now for $1,000 on the open market, or I can use it and generate $735 in equivalent today dollars. And recoverable amount is the greater of $1,000 or $735. So therefore, the correct answer is A. The recoverable amount of this asset under IFRS is $1,000. Alrighty, hard work is, foundation is laid and we are going to dive into some tricky stuff in the next video. So get ready, get your calculator, get your notes, get your Excel out and I'll see you there.